Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about gradients, CSS gradients, linear, radial, conic, repeating, all the different flavors. We're going to start from the beginning and teach you everything you need to know about gradients, probably more than you need to know. Let's get started here. I'm going to be using a code pen, a very simple code pen. There's nothing in the HTML window, it's just the body that I'm going to be adding a gradient to. So the way that we work with gradients is we use the background property, just like we could set the background to be red or we could set the background to be some image we can set it to be a gradient and there are three main types of gradients i'm going to talk about linear gradients radial and conic now linear gradients are by far the most common they are what they sound like uh, a gradient that goes in a line from left to right or top to bottom or at an angle from one corner to another corner uh, but let me just show you a very simple one let's go from how about teal to purple we provide at least two colors, any two colors that we want. Um, if I just provide one, I actually don't know what happens. <laughs> it doesn't work, but two colors at a minimum. Um, they can be named colors. They can be uh, HSL, RGB, you know, hex colors, anything. Um, I'm going to keep them named just to make this simpler to follow. So you'll see the default behavior is we get a gradient going from the top to the bottom in a line, starting at teal and moving to purple. I could add in a third color, like um, yellow. This might look terrible, but there we go. We now have three colors in this gradient, and they all take up the same amount of space. They transition evenly from one to the next. I could add in yet another one. How about uh, cyan at the end? Beautiful gradient. All right, let's go back to just two, teal and purple. Keep it easy. Uh, we can change the direction. So it's going from top to bottom um, by specifying at the beginning, before the colors, something like to top. We have these keywords we can use, to top or to left or to right. We can even get fancier and do things like to bottom left. And this means it's going to start at the top right and end at the bottom left. Or if I want to have something more specific, I could say 80 or how about 48 degrees, D-E-G. And now I've got this angle here. I can change. I can do 148 and you'll see that angle changes, right? There's a line that you could draw going from up here down to whatever 148 degrees is. The next thing I want to talk about is how we can control the size of each one of these, what we call a color stop. And let's say I want to have a lot more teal. I want teal to go all the way like over here before it even starts transitioning into the purple. I can specify a percentage after a color. So I could say 50%. And now teal takes up the first 50% somewhere around here is solid teal. And then the rest of the gradient space is going to be an even transition from teal to purple. So that's a simple example, right? If I change that to 10%, this is solid teal up to 10%, and then it transitions for a long ways into purple. I could also specify a color stop percentage for purple. Um, so if I say something like 40%, you'll see the end result here includes from zero to 10%, it's solid teal. And then from 40% to the end, it's solid purple. And then there's a transition between those two from 10% to 40%. So you can actually write this out using two numbers, the starting percentage, the ending percentage. It just will default to zero um, for this first color. And then this ending percentage would be 100, but that's the default if I don't specify it. So from zero to 10%, solid teal. From 40% uh, percent to 100%, solid purple. And then in between, I want you to have that nice little gradient, that transition. So we can also take advantage of these color stop percentages to create actual stripes where it's not really a gradient. Um, so let me show another example of that. Let's say that I had, uh, how about cyan, magenta, and yellow. And I want them to be three stripes or more than three stripes, but I can do from zero to, uh, let's say 25% will be cyan. And then from 25% onwards, is magenta. So I could say 25% to, I don't know, 50% uh, will be magenta. And you'll see that there's no transition between cyan and magenta because this percentage is the stop point for cyan. It's from 0% to 25. 
magenta starts at 25, so there's no gradient there or no transition. And then let's say yellow is from 50% to 75%. And then what will come after that? Uh, I don't know. Let's go back to cyan maybe. Cyan 75%. There we go. So this is a valid gradient, but it's all vertical stripes. Of course, I could say I want it to go to bottom, and now we have horizontal stripes. So that's linear gradients. The next type of gradient we'll look at is the radial gradient. So a radial gradient is going to radiate outward from some origin, usually in the shape of, well, often a circle, but definitely an ellipse. It doesn't have to be a circle. So it radiates outward from a central origin. So if I just did um, cyan to magenta, you'll see that there's a circle or an ellipse here, starting with cyan in the middle, radiating out to magenta. Now there's a couple things we can do. First of all, I can say that I want this to be a circle and not an ellipse, and so now we get a circle there. Um, I could specify multiple colors, of course. I could add in yellow. I can even specify those color stop percentages. So if I want a lot, uh, a lot more cyan, let's say 60% cyan, there we go. And I could do the same for all the other colors. Um, I can even position where the origin is. So right now it's at the center of this container, but I could do something like at bottom or bottom left. And you can see this origin is now over here and it's radiating out in a circle from this bottom left corner. So that's pretty much it for radial gradients. We have some gradient that is created with two or more colors radiating outwards from some central origin. And then the third type of gradient we'll look at is probably the least commonly used, at least for me, the conic gradient. So the conic gradient needs two or more colors. And let's do the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, blue, let's do indigo, indigo and violet. All right, so what happens here is that we have another form of a gradient where there's a circle involved and there's a central point of rotation, but unlike a radial gradient where the colors radiate out from the center, in a conic gradient, they rotate around some center point. So we go clockwise, right? Red to orange to yellow to green to blue, indigo to violet. You can change uh, the color stops just like any other gradient. There is more to creating these conic gradients. You can position uh, the gradient itself so it's not just at the center. And the final thing that you need to know about gradients is that there's a repeating version of each of the three gradients we've covered. So linear gradient, there is a repeating linear gradient that does what it sounds like. It will repeat some pattern over and over. So if I had a cyan to magenta gradient, it's not really going to repeat it because our gradient is just from cyan to magenta, take up as much space as needed um, and stretch that gradient. But if I were to actually shorten this, and instead of using a percentage like 10%, um, we can set our color stop values or lengths using pixels, for example. So I could say I want 50 pixels of cyan. So from zero to 50 is cyan. And then from 50 pixels to 100 is magenta. And then from cyan again at the end, from 100 pixels to 150 pixels. And what do we get? We get a repeating pattern. Now, if I didn't have that repeating there, this is what we end up with, right? Cyan, magenta, and then cyan to the end. But as soon as I make it repeat, we get cyan, magenta, cyan, magenta, and so on. Um, I could add in one more, right? I could go back to yellow, CMY. So yellow from 100 pixels, 250 pixels, and then cyan will be 150 pixels onwards. To 200. So that's a repeating linear gradient. Here is a repeating radial gradient. Very cool looking. And here are some examples of repeating conic gradients. Here's what it looks like as a non-repeating gradient. And then I add repeating in front and you can see what happens. Same thing here. Here's the regular conic gradient. That slice there and then we make it repeat and we get this nice looking thing. All right. So those are the three types of repeating gradients. They're all variations of the three main gradients, linear, radial, and conic gradients.
All right, that's it for the video. I hope you learned something or possibly maybe enjoyed it. Um, either way, please consider subscribing. Check out some of my other videos. And that's it. Goodbye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.